Hey everybody, welcome. This is Joe Bernstein, DropTheArmor.com, and I actually want to talk today about something that I'm finding to be pretty pervasive in our culture right now, pretty pervasive in the way people approach their angle on how they're going to make change in their life, how they're going to create a wellness habit, how they're going to start exercising or go on a diet. It's come up a lot in my life, and it's come up a lot in the coaching experiences I've had so far with the 10 folks I've started coaching for free. So what I've noticed is we all seem to have this tendency to want to create more tension in our life, to create more challenge in our life. There's some oh, innate ability, innate message in all of us that likes to say, well, if you're going to make change, you've got to bust your ass. And you've got to make something really hard happen. I don't think that's the truth, and I'm going to explain why. So what I'm seeing people do is I'm seeing people make decisions, like they want to quit smoking. So what are they going to do? They get inspired. They want to throw out a pack of cigarettes and just go cold turkey right there. And knowing they've done that before, for some reason thinking this time is the time it's going to change. Or people saying that I've got to go on a diet, so they start trying to cut out all the stuff that they're eating now that, by the way, they're biologically still addicted to, so they're setting themselves up for failure. Um, or you say, I got to lose 100 pounds. And you focus on that idea that you're going to lose 100 pounds and that you've got to change everything in your lifestyle to make that big shift. And what I know I've done in my past when it comes to my personal growth or my wellness or my development is I like to look at the kind of place I want to be in the future, that mountaintop position of that ideal self. And I want to try and make it happen right away. And I'm here to tell you that I know for a damn fact that's never the way it's going to work. When we do that, we put all this pressure on ourselves, and people naturally don't like pressure. We are bioengineered, if you will, to literally relieve pressure from our lives. We're wired to learn how to survive, to get everything we need for survival, and then literally spend the rest of our time relaxing, spend the rest of our time conserving our calories, conserving our energy, conserving our brain power, conserving our willpower, conserving our ability to make choices. But for some reason, there's this, this draw within us to want to push and pull and climb that big mountain. Now, my philosophy is the exact opposite. My philosophy is to actually make change, we're going to take very little teeny steps, small steps at a time, small bites as one of my clients called it. So when someone says to me, you know, okay, so what I'm going to do is for 30 minutes every day, I'm going to focus on this. I'm here to tell them. I'm here to bring the voice of reason. I'm here to bring the voice of less resistance, less challenge, less tension. And I'm here to say, why don't you shoot for 15 minutes three times a week instead of 30 minutes every day? Now, why is that a strategy that works? You might think that that's lowering the bar. In a way it is, in a way it's lowering the bar, but what it's doing is it's providing us an opportunity to win and an opportunity for us to create the satisfaction of accomplishing our goals. Now, I don't want to stop anyone. If someone says, I want to do something for 15 minutes every single day, I'm going to tell them, great, your goal is to do it for 15 minutes, three days a week. And if you still feel energy to keep going, then you're going to do 30 minutes. Or are you going to do a fourth day or a fifth day or a sixth day? Don't stop the progress if it's happening, but don't create such a stretch that there's tension in our lives. Now, this goes back to kind of a concept that I believe in. I'm a big fan of archetypal psychology. So two of the major archetypes that play out in all of us, no matter where we are, men, women, children, elderly, it doesn't matter, our elders, we all have certain archetypes, and a couple of them are the warrior, right? The warrior is the guy who sets boundaries. He's the person who puts a shoulder down and does the work, who climbs the mountain, who goes to battle, who is there to fight and push and buckle down and make some change happen, right? That's that energy that we need to get the job done a lot of the time. And there's also magician energy. Magician energy is the energy of transformation. It's the energy of going inside. It's the energy of stopping and thinking and coming up with a strategy that's actually going to work. 
It's the energy of introspection. Now, there's a reason that the warrior energy is called the warrior, right? The warrior I type. They're the one who puts the shoulder down, who wields the sword, who gets the job done, who goes to battle, who goes to war. And the magician is called the magician. When we want to make big changes in our lives, it's like fucking magic, okay? And I don't say that lightly because so many people want to make changes in their lives and they have these goals on their plate for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. For some reason, it's not happening. Now, that to me sounds like magic. If I want to make something happen, if I want to make something appear, if I want to be the alchemist in my life, if you will, and I've tried or I've had thought put around it for years and it's not happening, then to make it happen really is magic. So we call the magician the magician for a reason, right? The magician is the one who figures it all out. So often people want to change and they like to incorporate that warrior energy. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to buckle down, I'm going to do that shit that I've said I wanted to do for years that for some reason I've never done, right? And I'm here to tell you that's not where it happens. The change, the transition, the introspection, that happens within our magician energy. Our magician figures out what's wrong. Our magician gets mindful. Our magician gets curious. Our magician gets inquisitive. And our magician often at times can also be like a scientist. Someone who does experiments. Someone who's trying to make something happen. Someone who's trying to make something out of nothing. So that's what I see happening. I see people creating all this resistance, you know. I'm not exercising at all right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up and I'm going to jog every morning for 20 minutes. No, you're not. You're not going to do that. And it's really honorable to think that you are. But the reality is you are probably not. Some people can go out there and say, I'm going to make a change. And there's this big catalyst in their life that allows them to make the change. Maybe there's some trauma that happens that says you've got to make a change right now. And it imprints on their neurobiology and it just makes a change. But for most of us, that's not how it's going to happen. For most of us, it's going to happen by taking those small steps. By taking those small bites. And I'll give you an example, right? Or I'll actually give a metaphor. The way I see it is we're always telling ourselves, oh, I can eat this. I can't eat that. Even though stuff I love is on the I can't eat that list. So we create all this tension. I can't eat it. I can't eat it. I can't eat it. So you're good for a while. You don't eat it. You eat a certain way. You're eating your vegetables. You're eating your whole grains or whatever you think is important to you. You're drinking all your water, right? And what you're doing is you're saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. I need to keep myself from doing this. I need to force myself to do this. So we're creating this resistance. And resistance acts like strapping a big rubber band to our back. Oh, you know, I can't eat this, 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 I can't eat this. And then what happens with the rubber band, right? So we create all this resistance, and naturally the rubber band has to apply the law of physics and snap back. So what happens? You eat a bunch of that stuff that you're not supposed to eat. Or like me, you might in the past go on a binge when you've been watching your calories and being mindful of everything you eat and eating only the right things. You go on a binge of some sort, you really snap back. And I don't care what that is, it's always gonna happen. I'm gonna quit smoking, so I'm gonna go cold turkey, I'm gonna throw away my pack. And I'm gonna resist and resist and resist and resist and maybe it lasts a couple of days and then you cave in and you get a pack and you like chain smoke for the next few days. This is the pattern that happens with us. This is what's really gonna happen in our life. When we try and make big change using this warrior energy and creating resistance so I'm here to challenge you to figure out, how do I get rid of the resistance? How do I get rid of the tension? Your job in coaching yourself, if you will, in changing yourself in transition is figuring out, how do I relieve resistance? How do I create ease in my life? How do I make it simple? So I like to focus on including things in our life, not taking things away from our life, right? So. You don't have to stop eating fried food. You don't have to stop eating sugar or your high carbs. You don't have to stop eating meat. But start eating some vegetables. Figure out. Get curious. Get rid of that old message, those old stories that your five-year-old self taught you about not liking vegetables. And go buy some. And try them. Cook them different ways. Try them raw. Stir fry them. Steam them. Just give it a shot. Get inquisitive. Have fun. Start to become the scientist. Start to become the magician in your own life. And find ways to ease the tension, right? To ease the tension. Whatever you say you want to go do to make a big change in your life for your fitness, take it 
cut it in half, make it simpler. Or another strategy would be, you want to start moving, you want to start exercising, so, okay, well, I'm told I've got to do CrossFit, or I've got to go do yoga, or I've got to go run, but maybe that doesn't really fit in your life. I'm going to go do yoga for three hours a week. Well, you know what? Not all of our lives have the opportunity to take three hours out of our week every single week. So we're setting ourselves up for failure. Well, what can I do? Why don't I start by stretching in the morning? Why don't I start by finding a sport that I used to love and on every Saturday joining like the intramural team? Let's find the things that we can do to make ourselves healthier, that we love, that we enjoy, that bring ease into our lives, that bring fun, that bring passion, that bring pleasure. Stop trying to be the warrior all the time. Stop trying to go to battle all the time because that's not where you're going to win. Life isn't a, at the end of the day, life is not a battle. Health is not a battle. Wellness is not a battle. It's about finding that place in you that starts to add flow, that starts to add joy. Finding activities that focus on a goal that's realistic for putting love into your life. I don't mean romantic love, but, but love, right? So example might be, you know, instead of focusing on the fact that I want to have that, that six-pack abs, what about focusing on, I'm going to start exercising because I want more energy to spend time with my kids. That's it. I want more energy to spend time with my kids. So that's an example of how we can set up big goals and put more pressure on ourselves, create more resistant, resistance in our lives, create more challenge, more pain, more stress, and we're setting ourselves up for failure. But when we take a step back, we use the magician energy instead of the warrior energy, and we figure out how we can bring more ease and flow and fun and joy and pleasure into our lives, that's when change starts to happen. We want to take small bites, we want to make it easy on ourselves, and we want to allow some flow. So those are some of the thoughts I have for today. Those are some of the experiences I've had so far in working with my clients. To make some change, we've got to break down into small steps, and we've got to figure it out from that place of magician, not from the place of the warrior. So go out there and figure out, how can I release tension? How can I drop some of my obligations to actually allow health into my life, to allow wellness into my life, to allow happiness into my life? What can I actually let go of to get something? So that's the bottom line. That's the message. That was some thoughts that I had on my mind today. I hope you enjoy. If you do, give me some feedback. Email me, joe at dropthearmor.com. Or you can go to the website, dropthearmor.com, drop a message. Uh, thank you so much for paying attention and listening to my rant. I appreciate it. And if you're interested at all in some coaching or even just some preliminary conversations, right now I'm giving away two free 45-minute sessions to anybody who wants to give coaching a try and just see what it's all about for themselves and try and to, to create some discovery and some inquiry for themselves and try and find some flow and fun and passion and to release some tension in your life to get healthy and start getting what you want. So hit me up. I'm here. This is what I'm passionate about. Love you all. Peace.